Hey guys, how's it going? Remington here. Today I'm with you for a short little review on the Go Launcher EX for the Android operating system. Now, this is one of my favorite launchers for Android, and uh, I do apologize because I'm using a crappy screen recorder, but it's a uh, it's really well put together. It has a lot of customization options, and I'm going to go over most of that with you. Uh, there is some more that I wasn't able to capture in this video, but I might create a second video later going over more advanced things. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about is kind of the overall style and look of the app. So you can see it's a really clean looking app. Uh, there are some different icons, but it is mostly the same as it was before. It's uh, really smooth and it looks really nice. And if we go into uh, here, we can see that there's a theme store. And this theme store has a bunch of different themes for whatever you like. There's some girly themes, there's some guy manly themes, and there's other themes like filter, which is kind of just a... Uh, in the middle theme but if you do click one it brings you to the play store where you can see some preview images and read more about it and um, I prefer the default theme but you can kinda see like if you look around it does look different so there is one option that allows you to change it so you can see that all the apps now have white backgrounds uh, so it r eliminates the transparency I prefer the transparency because it looks a bit smoother and nicer but that's just my preference you may have a different one so you can kind of see in the folders it looks really clean there's a blurred black background and it looks a lot like iOS you can also see this in my games folder you can also click the little plus button to add more apps to that folder now if you do a long hold it brings you to this really nice editing layout which you can add it widgets apps wallpapers effects uh, the app comes with a few pre-installed widgets however you can access your system widgets just by tapping on the icon and then it does take a while to load but once you get there you find your app that you want to create a widget for tap on it and then you tap on the type of widget you add and it automatically adds it now if we return back to the main screen here we can see that uh, you can just edit them by clicking and holding you can move them around or you can delete them and it has a really nice little animation you can also insert folders and apps onto your home screen from here. So I'm just going to create a folder. You just tap the folder icon and then you can select which apps you would like in that folder. I'm going to press the home button to cancel out so I don't get a you know, that glitched a bit there. But you can also add individual apps. So I'm just going to add 8 Ball Pool and Activity Zone for whatever reason. And uh, also you can change your wallpaper. So you can choose from a bunch of presets. You can also choose some of the local ones so I'm going to show you right here you can click local select gallery and then choose a photo I'm going to choose a cool mountain photo that I have that should be right here and then what I have it set to do is uh, used as a scrollable wallpaper which basically means that uh, it scrolls when you move so you can also apply down at the bottom you can apply different filters to your wallpaper and uh, there are quite a few they're not the greatest but it's nice to have so you can kinda see now that I'm scrolling it uh, the wallpaper moves with me it's best to use widescreen wallpapers for this and once you reach the edge you can kinda see it fades back into itself for a nice smooth transition so you can also add different transition effects and there are plenty of these there are 3D ones there's just regular ones. I prefer more uh, simple ones, which is why I use glass. But there are other things like roll, and then you can also choose random, which selects a random transition every time. And uh, one of the things I really find interesting about this is uh, it comes up here in a snake 3D, which is one of the more interesting ones because it moves each app individually which probably means in the future you'll be getting more of that but I use glass because that one's nice and smooth and I like that it's all based on opinion the Go Launcher also comes with a bunch of useful app management so if we go into the tools and select app manager we can see that there's a uh, awesome thing with some storage information and RAM usage there's also a bunch of apps listed based on uh, frequency, battery usage, size, and name in alphabetical order. This can be used to install and uninstall apps and disable them. So you can, inst like for example, if I want to uninstall Lexus Audio Editor, we're going to select that and then we click the trash can down at the bottom, click uninstall, and then it will uninstall. You can also select multiple things at one time 
but I'm not going to delete them because I need both of these apps, especially since one's recording right now. So another thing that we can go into is we can head back over here and you can long hold on each object and you can select different things such as uh, replace the icon, rename the app, delete it from the screen, or uninstall it altogether. So if I rename it here, let's just say I want it to be called 8-Ball. So I can delete pool, click OK, and now you can see that it says 8-Ball instead of 8-Ball pool. And I really like this feature. Another thing you can do is uh, come over here and replace the icon. And it gives you a bunch of different icons. You can also choose from the gallery by clicking an object in the upper right. I'm not going to do this though because I want to keep my activity zone looking the same. So I'm going to click reset and it's back to normal. So now to delete it, we'll just hold on it and click delete. We'll do the same for 8-Ball Pool. I don't want to uninstall it, so just click delete and it's gone from the home screen, but it's still installed. Another thing is in the app dock, there's a lot of different features. So if you hold, it shakes kind of like iOS and it's got the little X in the top, which I kind of like. I don't know why I kind of missed that feature in Android and I'm happy to see it's returned. You can also change different preferences about it. One of my favorite ones is grid size, which allows you to fit more apps per row. So now if we go back in here, we can see there are now six apps per row as opposed to the previous five apps, or per column I should say. And this is really helpful, especially if you have a lot of apps. But I'm going to reset mine to the default. And then we're going to go and look at some more settings. So you can also change the transition into it and between things. So between pages, I have it set to glass right now, but you have all these different options. And then you also have different things to enter and exit the app drawer. The app drawer also has a couple different categories up at the top now. So there's things like games, which you can add to, and services. For some reason, mine doesn't appear to have anything except for the app manager, and it won't let me add anything, which is one small thing I'd like to see changed. Also down at the bottom, it has a couple features. So one of these is an alphabetical search. So each time you tap a letter, it shows you all of the apps that have a letter beginning with the letter you selected. This can be reverted by tapping all apps. Second button brings you to an alternate app store. It's definitely not as good as Google Play or the Samsung app store. It's pretty sucky actually, but it's kind of helpful. Third button brings you back to the home page, simple enough. The fourth button brings you to an alternate game store, which for some reason takes forever to load for me. I'm not sure if it's just my problem, but it takes forever, and as you can see, it's still not loaded, and it's still not loaded, and this could go on for a really long time, but I'm just going to exit out because I don't have the patience, and what do you know, it loaded right as I exited out. It also gives you this little thing that allows you to check what, at which apps are running and clears up the memory for you, so that's really nice. If you tap it twice, it does a deeper clean and clears some more things, but eventually it hits a point where it can't restart anymore. There are also a few different gestures that you can do. So you can swipe down to open up a search, which allows you to search for apps. It also has different tags and stuff. So you can see if I search for the, it comes up with a bunch of different things. It also allows you to do web search, YouTube search, wiki search, or Amazon search. You can also click on one of the tags and it will immediately search for that. I'm too lazy to wait for it to load. So we're just going to return to this screen. And you can also swipe up to open some organization settings. So you can sort things from A to Z or Z to A. You can create new folders, or you could use App Lock, which is really helpful. So it's simply a pattern lock which locks your apps. So if I go ahead and turn this on for 8-Ball Pool, we return back here and we launch 8-Ball Pool. It's now going to prompt us for the password. So now it's going to go ahead and launch 8-Ball Pool here. But I'm not going to wait for it to launch. If it will exit out, come on. There you go. Then to remove it, we just swipe up again, go to App Lock, draw our pattern, and turn it off. And now it will be completely unlocked and available for anybody to access, considering you don't have a lock on your phone. Now there's also this little widget that they included, which clears your memory, just like back here in the settings, we can end the active apps. You can just do it simply from a widget, and it works just as well. 
So next I'm going to show you some gestures that uh, the phone has that you can set. So if we go into tools, click on gesture, there are seven different gestures that we have. So you can set any one of these and I have these all set to my own preference. So for mine, if I swipe down, it brings me to my tools. If I swipe up, it shows the active apps running so I can clear it just from wherever. And um, if I do pinch, it will lock my phone. However, I'm not going to do that because that will end the recording. So if we come into here and then we go into prefer bleh, preferences, there are also some different things that allow us to back up Go Launcher, which is so helpful it's not even funny how helpful it is because I have screwed it up and then you can just restore it just like that and it's very helpful to be able to do this and this is something that's extremely or that's really lacking in other launchers that I've used now let's talk a bit about go locker go locker is a alternate lock screen from the default and I like it a lot more than the default it offers things like widgets and memory clearing there are ads which is the biggest downside but uh, one of the things that's nice is when you swipe up to access the camera it's a lot like iOS and then you can also access the phone I'm having a little trouble here for some reason but if you get it correctly you can uh, open up the phone and you can access all of the data that you need to access right from the home screen. Additionally, instead of swiping to the side, you swipe up to unlock, which I like a lot more. It feels more natural to me. And um, also, you can kind of see the background is different this time than it was before. That's because I have it set to do a certain amount of wallpapers and to cycle through those. So the settings for Go Locker can be accessed by going into oops, not here, going into the Go Locker app. It's a very nice, very well built app and you can see there are plenty of themes, newer themes, uh there are look, look at all them. There are popular themes and they're also sorted into categories and there's just everything you could possibly want. So we're gonna go into the settings and view some settings here. So one of the biggest things that I like is you can unlock the status bar so you can access it from the lock screen instead of having to unlock the phone before you can access that. You can also choose different settings with what notifications you receive, including giving it the option to light up the screen when you receive a notification. Now if we return, we can go into some of the display options and you can see you can choose a random background. So I'm going to show you kind of what I did. I chose custom random background and I selected a bunch of random backgrounds, some that came pre-installed, others that didn't, and I can select all of them and they will be set to my background randomly and I really like that feature. You can also choose time and date, give it a 24 hour format or also give it a different date format. You can also choose whether to even have the date and time on there or not. And then you can also hide the status bar altogether, which is another feature I like. That's why on my main screen I have the status bar hidden because it makes the screen look a lot bigger. You can also change unlock effect. So if mine's set to fade out, there are so many more. You can also change uh, the unlock sounds. You can choose the default sound or you can also uh, look into your system ringtones and choose one. It's helpful to have unlock sounds in there too. So I'm going to reset mine to default, and you can also change vibrate feedback if you wish. There's also security, which includes things like pin locks, which I don't know, I'll just type whatever. It goes forever and ever. You can type in as many numbers as you'd like. So I'm just going to set mine to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, and that was my email. And I don't want to rate you right now, Go Locker. So now, if we unlock our phone again, so now it prompts us for a password. So I don't want to type in my password quite yet, but you can see I can type six letters and it won't tell me it's wrong. It just won't let me in. So I can type as many as I like and if it's wrong, it's just not going to let me in. And the person that's typing this has no idea how many letters there are or how many numbers there are. And I just did it and it let me write in no need to press OK. Another thing is there's a gesture lock. Now, I advise using a simple pattern for the gesture lock because it is pretty touchy. So I'm just going to use a little plus symbol as mine. And there's my email again. So if we lock and unlock, it prompts us to draw our gesture. 
and then it lets us in. That's actually the smoothest it's ever worked. I don't advise using gesture because it is really sensitive. You can also choose password unlock which skips the lock screen and immediately takes you to the password. So as you can see now they just unlocked my phone it just asks me to draw my gesture. There is no lock screen, there is no anything. I prefer to keep that off, however you may like that on. Another useful feature is the emergency unlock feature. So what this feature does, it allows you to press either the back end volume button or long hold the volume button in order to unlock your phone. This bypasses the lock screen and is extremely useful if you are in an emergency situation. So this does also have some other features such as a music player, but I found that to be extremely buggy and it crashes most of the time and I end up having to restart my phone, so I would not advise using it. Other than that, I really hope this video helped you guys. I, it was a lot of fun to make, especially screwing around with Go Launcher enough to uh, kind of get a feel for it. It is definitely my favorite launcher out of everything that I've tried, and I would definitely recommend it to all of you guys. I've recommended it to a few of my friends, and uh, it's really just well built, well developed, and it looks great. So, whoever made Go Launcher, you're the cool people. I like you, kind of. I don't know. But other than that, uh, this was my first review I've ever actually done, so I hope you guys liked it. If you have any recommendations for next time, please leave those down in the comments. Other than that, remember to leave a like if you liked, and uh, subscribe if you want to see some more. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace! <laughs>